So this comes again to um, the question of who are you translating for um, and whether that has been um, clearly defined by the publisher, whether that's something you've been able to be involved in, whether the yeah. author um, yeah. has expressed a certain desire. Um, who are you translating for? That's, that's indeed a very good question because basically we're translating for sub-Saharan English speaking audience. And here, this question brings me, brings to mind one of that term which I've been grappling with, uh, baccalaureate. So at some point I am tempted as a Cameroonian and with the dual systems we have, I am tempted to look for the equivalent in the, in the English speaking community, which will be the advanced level. But if you do that, I'm not sure uh, an English speaking reader in Ghana would directly uh, say, understand what you're trying to say. So I think it's, 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 it's challenging, but we're, we're, we're doing everything possible to make sure that we reach whatever choices we're making. The reading experience is the same for those who, who find themselves within the geographical community we were translating for. So have you been tempted to add any glossaries for that broader sub-Saharan African audience? Um, or are you looking at multiple versions of, of your translation? Or no. are you making shifts within the translation itself to appeal to that? Um, yeah, 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 I, 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 I'm, I'm making shifts. I'm making shifts within, within for now I, have, I am not very, uh, excited about the idea of glossaries and all of that, because I think at some point in time, it truncates the reading experience. If somebody has to always flip and go for footnotes. So for now, I'm looking for, I'm going for choices that inform the widest, the, 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 the highest, the, the biggest number of pe people, re readers, regardless of wherever they're coming from. But I'm just making sure that whoever is reading the, 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 the leaf with a fair idea of what, I'm, what, the, what we're trying to convey in a particular instance. Because we don't want, to, we don't want a, reading, a reader to leave uh, a walk away with a feeling of exclusion. He or she needs to be able to find themselves, to be able to connect with those characters. Because it's through those words that uh, readers are able to connect, feel whatever our, uh, characters are feeling at a certain point. So during this whole process, you say, which has lasted so far a year, yeah. uh, how have you, and, and it can be quite a private, solitary experience, um, some of the time, how have you got through that? Have you had the chance to chat to family, colleagues about your experiences? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because at, at, at some point, I, I have shelved most of my commercial translation work. So people, would, people who used to solicit me at some point, they're asking themselves, they're, they're wondering like, why have you just gone AWOL? And so I've had to explain to them. And I think uh, luckily I am surrounded by people who are very encouraging. So I'm equally too quite interested in literary trans translation because it's uh, yet to be, it's an untapped field in the Cameroonian literary, in the Cameroonian translation landscape. So I, I reached out to people, people have reached out to me and I must admit there is quite, a, so there's much excitement at the prospect of having a book of that magnitude and an award-winning book uh, being translated uh, from Cameroon. So in that respect, I've been very lucky to have uh, supportive uh, people around me. And I have to ask you about the financial side of that. Um, because yeah. As we all know, literary translation doesn't pay really well. However, um, respectful and reasonable the wage from um, BAKWA or funding bodies, et cetera, et cetera, yeah. it, it, it is tough to make a living out of literary translation and you've had to put your commercial stuff to one side. So if you don't yeah. mind asking, how manageable is that? Well, I think from my experience so far, um, I must admit that I, I, I sort of joined the, the chain of sacrifice that even if I put it that way, that has been launched by Bakwa because I think for a young and embryonic body like them to engage in this field, it takes a, a, a lot of courage to be able to, to do that even with the support of, of sponsors. But I think I equally, that was my mindset that I'm going into this, not necessarily to make money, but because there is a wide, there's a broader goal to be attained that of ensuring that intercultural communication takes place, especially in Cameroon, between the French and the English-speaking community. 
And that goal, that intercultural communication will only occur through literary translation, would equally occur through literary translation. So my first idea here was not necessarily to make money, but it was just to kickstart a movement of young translators who want to make sure that they play their own little role in contributing to a peaceful co coexistence. Because in the absence of translation, I think communities will always misunderstand themselves. Whereas with translation, there will be more understanding and there will be less con con conflict. So I think I prepared myself from day one when I accepted this, this task, that, I was, that the, the goal here wasn't to make money, but more or less kicks out a move, movement. And hopefully uh, with the work that we're hoping, the quality of what we're going to put out is going to encourage many more translators who are on the commercial side to every, even just once in a while to make a foray into literary translation to, so that we can increase the pool of uh, literature in Cameroon that has been translated and, and is available in French and English. And has been produced within Cameroon itself. Exactly. And this is incredibly groundbreaking, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think it's groundbreaking work because when you look at it, the core of most of the translated literature in Cameroon is destined only for the school curriculum. So if a book is not going to be put on the syllabus, it's not going to be studied in schools, very few publishers and authors show any interest in that. So I think this is a very, as you said, a commendable initiative by Bakwa. And I hope they're going to get uh, support from be it from individuals or institutions to be able to push and so that at some point in time, we have a critical mass where literary translation is part and parcel, is a staple in the Cameroonian literary scene. And as you said, um, this book is, as a source text was award-winning yeah. uh, and yeah. received a lot, of, a lot of publicity in itself. Yeah. Um, so you must feel a, a sense of pride that this book that, that you were chosen to translate this book and that that in turn will hopefully generate publicity um, and potentially even be put forward for prizes. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I think before the pride, I think I am very much concerned with restituting the genus of the author. I think for me, that is, that is, that if, I, if, if we are able to put something which is at par with the genus of the author in the other language, I think that in itself is going to bring other supporting, I don't know, benefits if you might want. So for us, I think personally for me, and I think this is something which the, 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 the copy editing team too, is it's, it's a feeling which we share. Our primary concern for now is restituting the author's genus in this translation. And if we succeed to do that, then I think there's going to be a ripple effect with, I don't know, as you say, maybe interest in awards and all of that. So, and, and you've gone through so many different stages in this, and obviously you're still yeah. working on the manuscript, you're editing, yeah. um, and yeah. that process will go on for a little while. Um, so at this stage, do you feel this is something that you'd like to do again? Of course, of course, of course, of course. I think uh, sooner than immediately, I have completed this task. I'm already looking forward to uh, my next book. Yeah, so I think it's because I think th this, this, this particular opportunity has opened my eyes to all the possibilities, to all what has to be done and needs to be done. So I, I am already, it's something which is going to become a core component of my career as a translator. And will that be um, working with Bakra again? Or are you perhaps reading um, French or Francophone literature looking for books? Um, where, do you, where do you see that next translation coming from? I think everything being equal is going to be, uh, is going to be uh, Cameroonian. I'm going to be translating a collection of short stories. But it's this time around, it's something once more, we're trying to break new ground. So we're hoping to push, pers it's, it's, it's some sort of a pet project for, for me. So I'm hoping to next year engage in the translation of a book, a collection of short stories. Once more, it's going to be uh, uh, authored by women, collection of short stories by women. So yeah, that's my, that's, that's my next port. Okay, and finally, because uh, you've got so much experience now that I think other people will be dying to hear about and learn from. So what advice would you give to 
other emerging literary translators, perhaps who've either translated a small amount before or haven't translated before, but that's what they'd love to do. Um, what advice would you give them? I think the advice I'll give them that the first thing it's to, they, they need to know that it's a level of love. Uh, they, whoever wants to engage in this shouldn't be going in there for the money or what, whatsoever. You need to very much be passionate about it because what has kept me going all this, this while has been passion. I'm very passionate about what I, what I do. I think that's the first thing I would tell them and I'll equally inform them that it requires a constant learning and unlearning. You need to put yourself in that state of mind. And it's, uh, you need to be able to question, impeach your, 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 your own knowledge so that you may be able to produce new knowledge. I think those are the two main things that I would say to whoever. Yeah, you should need to be very, that, is, that requires being humble to admit that you could do better and that you should do better and go about doing, doing that. And do you have any specific advice for um, Cameroonians who want to progress in literary translation? Yeah, I think uh, they should, they need to look within, need, within Cameroon because there is so much work that needs to be done in literary translation. That is the first place where they need to start looking. I think that's my first advice. We as Cameroonian translators, we shouldn't be waiting for people from outside to come and do what which we should do. Because at the end of the day, when that happens, they might, uh, the result, the outcome might not be an accurate reflection of us people. We need to, through literary translation, take ownership of our narratives. So I, I think that's my main uh, encouragement, my main advice to Cameroonian trans those Cameroonian translators who want to venture into literary translation. Let's look home. Let's look within us because there is so much work to be done. And is that retranslating the classics that have been translated outside Cameroon or new? Um, pieces of work? Definitely. Even retranslating is very, very important because that, 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 that is equally part of reclaiming, taking ownership and setting a new uh, pace. Yeah, I think it's important. That should be, retranslating should be a core part of it because there are some classics when you read, when you, some translations, when you read, you, you definitely have a sense of the fact that this translation was done by somebody who is looking from outside in and not somebody who is within. Not necessarily to say those translations are bad. No, that's, that's not what, but they, there is, there's a perspective. There's a, an all new perspective which you need. We need new voices. We need new ways of seeing things. That's, that's, that's the beauty to, of it. Not necessarily to impeach the quality, but just to add to the diversity of voices that can be out there. And is there anything else you'd like to add um, after I've asked you all these questions? Is there anything I've missed out? Anything else you'd like to say? No, I think the only thing I would like to say is to thank once more uh, University of Bristol, as represented by yourself, Bakwa Magazine, for starting such in initiatives. I think uh, it was really important, and I hope that uh, you guys will always be around with such ideas, with such support, so that we can push this further. And why not, in a few years, run uh, degree programs in literary translation, because I think that is equally one way through which we can have uh, a mass or a, a, a huge pool of translators that can go into the world and translate. Thank you ever so much. And thank you for your time. And thank you, thank you, Georgina. Congratulations on all you've achieved. Thank you.